Hello, and welcome to the Science of Suicide Prevention, New Strategies for Understanding and Intervening Summit, hosted today by the U of M Injury Prevention Center. I'm Patrick Carter, the director of the center. We are pleased you have joined us today. Our center has organized a unique event to share the latest evidence-based prevention research around suicide, facilitate new collaborations, and explore new ideas for suicide prevention. Today's summit will focus on the full spectrum of research, including epidemiology, public policy, innovative strategies to expand and enhance prevention research, adoption of new evidence-based practices, translation of suicide prevention science, preventing suicide within the context of COVID-19, and in relation to social justice and or vulnerable populations. This event will provide a great opportunity to disseminate research, facilitate new collaborations, and explore new ideas for research in the field. We encourage you to share ideas network and ask questions to learn more about the science of suicide prevention. I'm tremendously excited today that more than 3,000 people have registered to join us to, to hear from our three plenary speakers, our 12 concurrent session speakers, and to engage with our 19 abstract presenters from around the world. In fact, the last count, we actually have attendees joining us from all 50 states and 86 countries. Before we get started, I wanted to give you a bit of background on our center. The U of M Injury Prevention Center is one of nine CDC-funded injury control research centers nationally. We address urgent issues related to research to identify evidence-based solutions, outreach to practitioners in the injury prevention community, and training to increase the pipeline of injury prevention researchers and practitioners. With over 1,000 members from 35 institutions and faculty leadership from more than 14 departments around the university, the center brings together many disciplines to focus on injury prevention. While we cover many injury-related topics, we have a particular focus on opioids and overdose prevention, suicide, youth violence, motor vehicle crash, concussion, and the prevention of older adult falls. Before we begin our day, I wanted to run through some of the resources that our center has that you may find useful. The first are our massive open online courses. We have two offerings that are free and available to anyone who is interested. The first is a course on injury prevention in children and teens. You can take this course to learn from a multidisciplinary panel of expert researchers and practitioners through lectures, interviews, and demonstrations, reviewing evidence-based strategies and interventions that you can apply in your work. In addition to researchers, clinicians, and practitioners, the content is appropriate broadly for educators, coaches, childcare providers, and parents. As a learner, you have the ability to select all the modules or individual topics that interest you most. The course can be followed in both a linear or nonlinear structure according to your preferred viewing order. This course covers numerous injury prevention topics focused around child and adolescent injury prevention, such as peer violence and bullying, suicide prevention, child maltreatment, substance use, burn prevention, concussion, teen driving, firearm safety, and child passenger safety. In addition, we have a relatively new offering called Impacting the Opioid Crisis, Prevention, Education, and Practice for Non-Prescribing Providers. This course is designed to educate non-prescribing providers in the clinical space or outside the clinical space or allied health professionals to directly impact the ongoing opioid crisis in the United States through increasing knowledge and tools that will transform practice and policies. Both course offerings have free uh, AMA credits for physicians and nurses, and the opioid course additionally offers Michigan social work and pharmacy credits. You can find more information about these courses on our website, injurycenter.umich.edu. I would also like to highlight that you can become a member of our center. Membership is free and the application is very short. Membership will give you access to all of our communications from the center, including our newsletter, funding opportunity, upcoming events, as well as the latest information on our research and, and uh, publications. You will also get to be recognized on the website as a member and we'll be able to list membership on your CV, resume, or bio sketch. So you become a member, please visit the website and click on the become a member tab at the top of the page. Before we begin with the presentations, I wanted to quickly review the agenda so everyone is aware of how the day will run. First, we will hear from Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer and University of Michigan Chief Medical Officer Dr. Preeti Milani to provide some opening remarks. We will, this will be followed by our two 
plenary sessions, the first focused on suicide prevention and COVID-19 by Dr. Craig Bryan, and then on uh, NIMH suicide prevention research priorities by Dr. Jane Pearson. At 1.45, we will take a short break. When we return at two o'clock, you will need to click on the session room tab that you see in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Once there, you will be able to choose from three concurrent sessions, one focused on subpopulations at risk, one focused on recognizing suicide risk and near-term suicide warning signs, and one focused on clinical interventions and the treatment of suicide risk. After these sessions, we'll take another short break and resume at 3.30 uh, p.m. with abstract presentations. Again, at this time, you'll click on the session room button at the left-hand side of your screen. And once there, you'll be able to choose from four concurrent abstract presentations. After these sessions, we'll take another short break and resume at 4.20 in the stage area, which is the room we're currently in now. At that time, Dr. Kate Comtoy will give a presentation on science to practice around suicide prevention, and the day will end at 5 p.m. As a note, all of the plenary presentations were pre-recorded in order to limit any technical difficulties, but the presenters will take questions live after the completion of their talks in real time. Please type any questions you have in the session Q&A box, and our moderator will ask them to the presenters. You will notice at the right-hand side of your screen that you can toggle between the Q&A for the event and the Q&A for the session, but we ask that when you're typing questions to please type them in the Q&A for the session. The entire day is being missed a session. You can watch it later, uh, and it will be available uh, on our website. In addition, if you have any technical difficulties or questions throughout the day, please email U of M Injury Center at umich.edu. This email is also listed in the reception area, and people will be monitoring it throughout the day today to address any issues that come up. Lastly, we'll be sending an evaluation out after the event. So please let us know what worked and what you think we can improve on for our next summit. For those of you who have uh, registered for continuing education credit, we have AMA, APA, Michigan Social Work, and CHESS, MCHESS credits available. In order to uh, obtain those opportunities, you need to be present throughout the entire event and complete the evaluation survey that will be sent at the end. At this time, uh, I have the great honor of introducing Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Please join me in welcoming, welcoming her opening talk. Hi everyone, this is Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Welcome to the Science of Suicide Prevention Summit, hosted by the University of Michigan Injury Prevention Center. We all have a role to play in keeping our communities safe. Researchers, public health practitioners, community members, and policymakers can all make a difference. As Governor of Michigan, I have made suicide prevention a priority, particularly due to the mental health impact of COVID-19 my administration, along with the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and all of our partners have been instrumental in supporting Michiganders that are struggling during this unprecedented time. Despite this, there still is a lot of work to do. The suicide prevention research and practitioner community is strong and full of amazing people who've dedicated their lives to making communities safer and healthier. These are challenging times in our professional and personal lives. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you. I'm grateful for your hard work and dedication to continuing to make communities safer and healthier during this rapidly changing pandemic. Now more than ever, it is vital that we learn about the public health issue of suicide and develop evidence-based solutions. I hope you enjoy today's conference. Thank you to Governor Whitmer for her opening remarks. We thank her for all of her support in the field of suicide prevention. Next up, I would like to introduce Dr. Preeti Malani. She is the health, Chief Health Officer and a Professor of Medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases here at the University of Michigan. She is also Director of the University of Michigan's National Poll on Healthy Aging. Her clinical expertise includes both infectious diseases and geriatric medicine. Dr. Milani is a graduate of the University of Michigan and received her medical doctorate degree from the Wayne State University School of Medicine. Prior to medical school, she completed a master's in journalism at Northwestern University's Medill School of Journalism. She completed her internal medicine residency and infectious disease fellowship at the University of Michigan, where she also received a master's degree in clinical research design and statistical analysis. Dr. Milani completed fellowship training in geriatric medicine at Oregon Health and Science University. She has published more than 150 peer-reviewed articles and editorials and has edited five books. 
We are delighted that she has agreed to give our opening remarks today. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Milani. Thank you so much, Patrick, for the kind introduction. On behalf of the University of Michigan, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's conference, the Science of Suicide Prevention Summit, hosted by the University of Michigan Injury Prevention Center. You know, I'm uh, absolutely delighted that so many people are joining today's event virtually. Now, I heard it was like 3,000 people. It's remarkable. Uh, thank you for everything you're doing to keep our community safe. And as the conference tagline says, I hope that you have an opportunity to improve your understanding so that you can understand and inter intervene. Now, during the past year, while our collective focus has really been on COVID, I've often said that COVID is not the only risk to our health. And in fact, the emotional aspects of our well being, social, emotional, occupational, are really front and center, particularly on a large campus like ours. And like COVID, suicide is a serious public health problem, one that devastates individuals and families and can have lasting harmful effects on entire communities. And also like COVID, suicide prevention is something that requires multiple layers of intervention. There's not a simple one size fits all. Now, a few numbers to, to sort of give perspective and set the stage. And I just wanted to thank uh, Jessica for helping me with uh, some of these data points. And I learned a lot in uh, reviewing this and in, in just preparing to even give these remarks. The suicide is a 10th leading cause of death in the United States. It's responsible for more than 47,000 deaths. That's in 2019. That's about one death every 11 minutes. And after increasing about 33% between 1999 and 2019, suicide rates did see a small decline in 2019. The number of people who think about or attempt suicide is even higher. In 2019, an estimated 12 million American adults seriously thought about suicide, 3.5 million planned a suicide attempt, and 1.4 million attempted suicide. Now, we don't have 2020 data, national data, but there are several smaller studies that suggest a substantial increase in the amount of emotional distress that people are feeling during the pandemic. Importantly, suicide affects all ages, but some groups have higher risks than others. Notably, suicide is the second leading cause of death for people age 10 to 34, the fourth leading cause among people 34 to 54, and the fifth leading cause among adults 45 to 54. Besides age, rates also vary by race and ethnicity. And some of the highest rates are seen among American Indian, Native Alaska populations and non-Hispanic white populations. Other populations with higher than average rates include military veterans, people who live in rural areas, and workers in certain industries and occupations like mining and construction. Young people who identify as lesbian, gay, and bisexual have higher rates of suicidal ideation behavior compared to their peers who identify as straight. Now, I want to especially recognize the more enormous risk for individuals that identify as transgender. And this diverse group comprises one of the highest risk populations for both suicide and suicide attempt. And although firearms are not the most common method by which people attempt suicide in the United States, they are the most lethal method with about 85% of suicide attempts with a firearm ending in death. It goes without saying that suicide and suicide attempts create serious emotional, physical, and economic impacts. People who attempt suicide are often left with and survive are often left with serious injuries and can have lifelong, lifelong effects on their health. Obviously, suicide and attempts also affect the health and well-being of friends, loved ones, coworkers, and the entire community. And when people die by suicide, their surviving family and friends are left with so many questions along with guilt, shock, anger, symptoms of depression and anxiety, and some may experience thoughts of suicide themselves. Among all these awful statistics, there's actually very good news. Suicide is preventable through research and evidence-based interventions. We all have a role to play in keeping our communities safe. Researchers, the medical public health community, community members, family, friends, policymakers, all of us we can all make a difference. At the University of Michigan, we have a strong institutional commitment to, to supporting mental health and well being, uh, both for our students as well as our faculty and staff. And uh, we do this in a way that's evidence based, 
And although we've learned to live alongside suicide, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> although we've learned to live alongside COVID, the other issues haven't gone away, especially for our students. And unfortunately, suicide is the leading, second leading cause of death among college students. And one suicide is one too many. On our campus, the team at CAPS, the Counseling and Psychological Services, has continued to support students trying to navigate the pandemic and continue their education and growth in a world that's really been turned upside down. The team at CAPS has really helped frame this in, with a couple important questions, and I've learned so much from them in the past few years. They, they ask, how can we promote and offer tools to support hope and resiliency? And how can we address and accomplish a culture caring for students in any level of psychological distress? And you know, these questions and a goal of zero suicides have inspired CAPS to devote extra effort to prevention on our campus. This has been done through lots of partnerships, through places like Student Life, the academic units, athletics, as well as the research myth mission and the work that's being done by the Center for Injury Prevention. You know, as chief health officer and as a U of M parent, the numbers are really sobering. At CAPS, 38% of students said that they had thought about or considered suicide. Students also report the following related experiences, perceived or actual lack of support, academic concerns that may be experienced as failure, lack of coping skills, feeling of hopelessness, and identity concerns. Now, I can't help but reflect on the fact that as these issues have gotten worse, I can't help but reflect on the fact that these issues have actually gotten worse this year as social isolation, and loneliness that we're all struggling with has increased. And this of course is built on the fact that loneliness on college campuses has been epidemic long before the pandemic. Now you heard about the great work that's being done by the University of Michigan Injury Prevention Center. Um, as you heard from Dr. Carter, it's one of nine centers like this in the country. And the center really lives at that interface between research and policy and focuses on a wide range of really timely topics. And you know, to the entire team, thank you for keeping the trains moving during the pandemic. It hasn't been easy or perfect, but thank you for having this conference. I'm really hopeful at some level, if the energy we've devoted to controlling COVID might eventually be diverted towards some of these complex issues. So the event today is an opportunity to share the latest evidence-based suicide prevention research, facilitate new collaborations and explore novel ideas for prevention. And you know, it's not quite the same. We were lamenting a little bit right before we started that, you know, there's not the usual dinner and networking, but I think all of you can find ways in some of the breakout rooms to connect with uh, each other. And you know, you're gonna get to hear from suicide prevention experts, both from the university and around the country. And in looking at the agenda, I'm really pleased with the attention being given both to COVID and racial justice. And you know, these risks for COVID, they go far beyond infection. I wanna take this opportunity to thank everyone for your hard work and dedication and continuing to make our communities safer and healthier. And despite substantial progress, there's a lot of work out there to do. We all have a role. I'm really hopeful to see what today brings. I hope you make new friends, share new ideas, and build these new collaborations. Enjoy the conference. I hope each of you walks away inspired to keep moving the science of suicide prevention forward. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Milani, for your opening remarks. And we thank you for all your leadership and support for injury prevention uh, throughout the university.